Right now, let's turn our attention back to what happens on the Earth service and what happens in sport. Well, I'm delighted to welcome someone you'll know is a great hero of mine, not just for being a, a fantastic Olympian, uh, but also uh, for being a fantastic champion uh, for women and for girls, and particularly for fair play in sport, so that we're only competing against other women and girls and not men who claim to be women. Well, she's got a brand new book out called Unfair Play, The Battle for Women's Sport. And I'm delighted to say she joins us right now to talk about it. Good morning to you, Sharon. Good morning, Gillian. I'm glad I'm not down in that sub as oh. much as I like you and I love the diving. That doesn't really appeal to me. No, I have to say it is absolutely horrific. Again, I say I think it's most most people, it's not their dream, is it? It's their worst nightmare. It really, yeah, really absolutely. is. Um, We've spoken to you many times on the show um, about about where we are in terms of trans activism, trans ideology, and how that is impacting on real women and real girls' lives. I, the only kind of women and girls there are. Um, and we've talked a lot about you know what happens in prisons, um, women having you know uh, being safe in prisons from from male predators pretending to be women. We've seen this all over Nicola Sturge and pretty much ousted her from power. Um, uh, we, we've talked about you know people not wanting to be in changing rooms with people of the opposite sex. I would include men not wanting to be in changing rooms with women. But it's actually on the, uh, I suppose, on the sports field where some of these battles have played out the most. And perhaps it's come to the fore and come to a lot of people who don't perhaps get involved in the politics of all of this so much, but just ordinary people go, hold on a minute, why is that six foot three bloke winning a women's medal in that sport? And that's what your book's about, isn't it? Yeah, well, the book is, is called Unfair Play because it's about the challenges to women's sport for a long time. So, for example, um, there's a 1,000 women in the UK that earn their living out of sport. There's nearly 11,000 men. 1% um, of the US sponsorship dollar goes to women's sports women and 4% of airtime. So we already have this really tiny piece of the cake, which in some sports it's growing, you know, football and rugby is definitely getting a bit more airtime, but sometimes it's at the expense of the other sports. If I ask the general public to name me the best British female swimmer at the moment, they probably really struggle, yeah. even though we've got two Olympic gold medalists in our mixed medley relay team. So. You know, it, it, it's not good. It's not necessarily going in the right direction. And when we have this big, you know, this tiny, tiny piece of the cake, we're now being expected to move over for a known advantage. That's the thing that's so frustrating. There are 18 peer reviewed studies out there. Not a single one of them shows that we can remove male puberty advantage. So we're asking our young girls and our women to stand next to people who have a known advantage. And yet we have WADA, which is the World Anti-Doping Agency, trying to stop people from taking drugs and getting the tiniest advantage in sports so they yep. can win. And, and yet we, yeah, we see it. And, and this is the thing. It's it's frankly, to just use it, it's bleeding obvious to everybody who's got eyes and ears that this is unfair. And yet the argument has been, look, we need to be inclusive. And look, it's only a few people. We all remember the Olympics yeah. when we had the uh, the trans woman uh, competing in the weightlifting. They said, but but you know, they said she, man, he didn't even win. So what's the big deal? But actually, this is happening across they are, the board. They are winning. Yeah, they, yeah, well, A, they are winning. We saw with Leah Thomas in, in, uh, in yeah. college swimming. But also, this is happening not just in elite sport. This is happening, you know, everywhere. I remember, I remember covering a couple of years ago, Kent County Cricket, their Women Cricketer of the Year, was a six-foot man. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, at the moment, there are 50 males identifying as women in America that are mopping up in, in cycling. Um, that's just in America, you know, in North America. So it, thank goodness for world aquatics and world athletics, you know, they're making the right decision. But you mentioned going down further down. You know, we've now got um, primary schools that have been doing races that have been mixed sex. And what happens is that little girls don't win anything, you know, on primary school sports days. I mean, what sort of message does that, does that give to young girls? So the book covers all sorts of different things. It covers East German era. It covers... Um, the correlation between the two, you know, obviously that's where I speak out. Well, yeah, I'm this is it. A lot, of, a lot of people won't realise this. Now, you, you know, we call you, you know, Olympic medalist. You should have been a gold medalist, but you have faced this level of unfairness because you were basically up against women who were who were being doped. So you you never faced a, a, a level playing field when you were. Do you face yeah. Do you face a playing and field in the in the swimming pool? You know what I mean. Absolutely. And, and we all our paperwork shows that the East Germans could make about a 9% improvement and they totally dominated. Yeah. They won 92% of the medals at European Championships, six medal podium sweeps at the Olympic Games where I won my, you know, won my medal. And males have a 10 to 30% advantage. 
and it crosses all levels of sport. So the East Germans are really just concentrating on swimming, track, and, and a bit of rowing. And look how dominant they were. Yeah. You know, they absolutely wiped the floor, but they didn't bother with the American championships, the British championships, the age groups, the county champ, all the other, the masters events or anything. They were all just yeah. left alone. So imagine how it is going to affect you. Know, we just say we're going to allow this male advantage. Indeed. And yet most of us most of us would just Yeah, most of us would just use a simple word, we'd call it cheating. We often see again and again. Say with Leah Thomas in America, he he was ranked when he was very, very, very competing as a man. Um, he was he was ranked at below 400, and then suddenly he's oh, one of the best. Than that. So much worse than that. in the world, Leah Thomas was ranked not even of the top 10 thousand right so that was in america that they were ranked 465th yeah. but in the world they weren't even the top 10,000, and yet they beat three american olympic silver medalists in the space of converting and transferring from in one year the important thing is that everybody should have access to sport yeah. right i love sport i want everyone to be able to do sport my position has never been an anti-trans position no. It's always been a pro-female, a pro fair sport position, and let's use the science. So the book outlines all the history, all the craziness of Kubatan, who tried to keep women out of the Olympics, mm. the East German era, which really, I thought I knew everything, and there's some extremely shocking stuff in the yeah. book, which, is, which the IOC just turned a totally natural blind eye to. The IOC are not the people to look up to to no. how to sport. And so it's, a, it's been fun. I'm glad it's there. It's a bit of a reference book, and I hope people can use it to try and put yeah. pressure on but, but this is it. to do the right thing. So often the people making these decisions, the people commenting, it simply don't know enough facts. When you talk about, you know, the male puberty advantage, and people say, well, oh, okay, but, you know, if they, if they manage to lower their testosterone, there's no... There are no changes you could make to any male body post puberty that will, in fact, pre puberty. Who are we kidding? That will actually make make it a fair playing field. I mean, when we talk about you know cycling, swimming, rugby. I mean, rugby. I mean, we're talking about huge, huge worries. Boxing. Yeah, Contact like sports. You know, there's a real serious. Uh, I mean of somebody losing their life. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of men who want to punch women in the face. I'm old-fashioned like that, and I think most people feel the same way. But we are seeing, you know, there, there are clearly huge advantages. If you're a six-foot bloke with broad shoulders, big feet and big hands, of course you're going to be able to swim faster than a woman. The, you know, the tallest woman in the world isn't going to be as big as, as, big as you. But but there's, it's amazing how many more women are standing up. We, we've seen, you know, women having to stand there as, as someone is winning first place, and these women are sort of half the size looking like, what on earth just happened? Um, more and more people are speaking out, and that is encouraging yeah. a lot of women athletes to say, up with this, we will not put. And they are saying, you allow that man to race pretending he's a woman. And they're not even men who, I mean, they're walking around with their bits hanging out in the changing rooms, for goodness sake. I mean, stuff that would be totally yeah. unacceptable. Well, I, don't, I don't know if a single transgender woman athlete mm. in the world of elite sport that, that has had any form of surgery whatsoever. So, you know, it's exactly. not... It, it, yeah, you know, and reducing testosterone does practically nothing. You know, we've got studies from last September coming out of Brazil, one of the biggest. Oh. And that said, after 14 years, they still weren't able to remove the advantage. So yeah. that's after 14 years. So we know that it's not a level playing field and we yeah. are gradually putting pressure on the governing bodies. But things like Strava, you know, which is the recording system for cycling, yeah. park run, people just have to self-identify. So what we're finding is transgender women are taking women's records, women's course records. You know, what are we going to have left? Yeah. So it's time for the silent majority to speak up and say, no, find better options. There are better options. Add extra yeah. categories. I think so categories, well, trans category. look, a trans category would just be trans women, i.e. men winning everything. Or you know what they can do? They can compete with other men, because that's what they are. Um, yeah. Fantastic to talk to you. Sharon Davies, again, absolutely here. Olympic medalist, medalist swimmer, should be in a gold uh, medal winner. Unfair Play is the name of her book. Unfair Play, The Battle for Women's Sport. It's a rip-roaring read. Uh, you will be so shocked by every single page. What can I say? Uh, thank you so much for joining us. 9.44 is the time.